So given the, cir uh, the first circle proof, it says circle O is congruent to circle P and QR is a common internal tangent. The circle O congruent to circle P statement tells you the radii are congruent. If two circles are congruent, then the radii are congruent. So step number two, the radii are OQ and PR. Um, and how would you word that? Radii of? But what was special about circle O and circle P? So when you write your next statement, it's all based on the statement above it. So this statement was that circle O is congruent to circle P, so I want to talk about those congruent circles in this reason. So radii of congruent circles are congruent. Number three, well, so we use that statement, let's look at this statement. QR is a common internal tangent, and tangents, what's the relationship between a tangent and a radius? They're perpendicular. So I can state that OQ is perpendicular to QR, and some of you have the habit of not putting the line segment of the line above. It's really important that you do that, even especially now in circles, because it could be a straight line or an arc. So you need to indicate with the appropriate line or arc above it, so you're telling the person it's a segment or it's an arc. So radius OQ is perpendicular, and then um, PR is perpendicular to QR. So that just brings my attention to here. The radii are segments, not lines, even though a segment is part of a line. Okay, so PR is perpendicular to QR, and that's because a radius is perpendicular to a tangent line at the point of tangency. And then number four is written according to that statement. What do perpendicular lines give you? Right angles. So number four, let's put some numbers in there in our picture. Let's call this a one and this a two. So angle one and angle two are right angles. And then what do you know about all right angles? They're congruent. And it's because perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles. And number five, all right angles are congruent. So in those little triangles right now, we have two sides congruent, or one side of one triangle congruent to the other side, or another side of the other triangle, and then an angle of one triangle congruent to an angle of the other. What's the other angle congruency we need, or side congruency? And before you answer that, we're not going to review all the methods to prove triangles congruent, but what are the two ways you cannot use to prove two triangles congruent? Maddie? SSA? AAA. So those are the two ways we can't use. So I don't want to look for side OS congruent to SP because that would be SSA. So is there another angle we can get to be congruent? Vertical angles. So let's put, um, let's call this angle three, that angle four. Those are vertical angles and all vertical angles are congruent. So number six, angle three, congruent to angle four because all vertical angles are congruent. Now the triangles are congruent by which shortcut? So triangle, let's say SQO, 
that would be congruent to triangle SRP. And the shortcut is we have an angle congruency, an angle congruency, and a side congruency. Angle, angle side. And then why would the sides OS and SP be congruent to finish? <laughs> Some of you are close. Some of you had it. C, P, C, T, C. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So you can skip the next proof because we're going to do that together with a partner or a small group. And let's move to the trig. At the top of the page, I want you to start by writing your trig ratio. So Katoa, what are the trig ratios again? Remember, you can only use those trig ratios when you have a right triangle. Excuse me. We have the law of cosines and the law of sines to use when we have a triangle, but it's not a right triangle. Law of sines, law of cosines, you might not recall. Law of cosines, does anyone remember what it is? That's law of sines. So law of sines is A over sine of capital A. And what does the lowercase and uppercase mean again? Capitals are the angles, lowercase are the sides. But what's special is that the sides are opposite that angle. So A over sine of A equals B over sine of B. And law of cosines is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. Now the letter could change, but what's special about law of cosines is the letter that's on the left side of the equal sign is opposite the capital. Okay? So let's look at the first question. I want you to read the first question and just decide, can I use one of the basic trig ratios, sine, cosine, or tangent? Or do we have to use law of sines or law of cosines? All right, in example three, it says tangents PA and PB, and you should know that tangents are congruent. So PA is congruent to PB. They're drawn from external point O. If O to A is 12, that means O to B is also 12. And these two triangles, because the radii are congruent and the tangents are congruent, will reflexive here. Those two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. Okay? Um, it says the measurement angle APP is 40. Find the length of the tangent. So if I look at one of the right triangles, let's call this X, we have a 90 degree angle. So that means we can use Sokotoa. But what do we use? Do we use sine? Do we use cosine? Or do we use tangent to find X? So looking at the angle, we have the side opposite and adjacent. The adjacent is the side that we're trying to find, so we have to use the adjacent side. So that means we could use um, cosine or tangent, but since we're given the side opposite, that says we have to use tangent. So tangent of 20 equals opposite over adjacent. Put this over 1 and cross multiply. 1 times 12 is 12 equals x tangent of 20. Divide by tangent of 20, and x equals 32.969729.03, rounded to the nearest tenth. The length of the tangent is going to be
is approximately 33.0 because they said to the tenth centimeters. In the accompanying diagram, DCFG is tangent to circle O. Now, the tangent line does not intersect a radius, a radius is not drawn. So it's, we don't have a 90 degree angle within that triangle. ECH is a secant. Measure of arc AB is 140. The measure of arc AF is 160. And FC is 10. Find AF to the nearest tenth. So that's two sides of a triangle. There's no 90 degree angle drawn. Now, if I only know two sides, does that tell me I have to use law of sines or law of cosines? Law of, if you look up at your formulas, law of sines involves one, two sides, where the law of cosines has all sides, the A, the B, and the C. So you need three sides. So when you know two sides of a triangle, you're going to use law of sines. If you want to, you can draw this triangle separately over here. So this is x, this is 10. So you need this angle and this angle. Is there any way to get one of those angles? Let me grab a different color. Beth? So add up the arcs we know, 160 and 140 is a sum of 300, subtract it from 360 and this arc is 60. Therefore this inscribed angle matches this one, half of 60 is 30 degrees. Now how do I find the other? If I highlight that with a different color, this angle right here, this exterior angle intercepts this arc in this arc. So this is half of 160 minus 60. So 100 over 2 is 50. So law of sine says the sine over the sine and the angle that's opposite. So sine of 50 equals the side over the sine of the angle opposite, which is 30. Proportion, we can cross multiply. So you can get out your calculators. We have to do 10 times the sine of 50. Then once you have that answer, divide by the sine of 30 to, tell, uh, to isolate x. And we get x equals 0.5. Fifteen point three two. We're rounding to the nearest tenth, so I'm only going to write it out to the hundredth. So if you if you had to round to the nearest tenth, then the length AF would be approximately fifteen point three. You don't see a unit, so we're good. In number five, it says we have chords A, B, and C, D, which intersect at E. AE, or measure of angle AC is 65, that's labeled in the picture. The length of AE is 6, which is labeled in the picture. EB is 8 and ED is 12, so everything's labeled. We need to find for part A the length of CE, and CE is right here. When two chords intersect in a circle, so I'm going to call that X, this is 6, this is 8, this is, well it's not perfect. 12, how do I find x? Manny? So 12 times x equals 8 times 6. So this times this equals this times this. So 12x equals 48, divide by 12, and x is 4, so CE is 4. The length of BD grab a different color. BD is the side of this triangle. So let's call this Y. Now in this triangle, we want to draw that separately. 
here's the y, here's the 8, here's the 12. All three sides, it's not a right triangle, it's law of cosines. But with law of cosines, you need an angle measure that's opposite one of those sides. So can you tell me an angle in the picture, Kylie? Vertical angle pair here. So this is, yes, 65. So law of cosine says the side that's opposite the angle given, squared, equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides, minus 2 times 8 times 12 times, I can't fit it, the cosine of 65. So y squared equals, let's do this in parts, 8 squared plus 12 squared? 64 and 144 is 208 minus 2 times 8 times 12 or 16 times 12. 92, 192 cosine of 65. We have to take the square root, cancels the square, and y equals plus or minus. You can type that whole line in, and what do we get for a decimal? All right, we're rounding to the nearest tenth, so it's 11.26. Reject the negative, and BD is approximately 11.3. Any unit of measurement? No. And last, we're going to find the area of triangle A, or no, triangle EBD, which is this one that I drew separately, E. B, D. So how do I find the area of that triangle? So here's the triangle. We have no right angle, so we have, in order to have a base and a height, they need to be two sides that are perpendicular. So we have to use trig, the area formula for trig. Does anyone remember? It's still one half. It's B, C, sine A. Now, A is the side included, or the angle included between the two sides. So in this case, it's going to be one half. The angles here in the two sides that or include that angle are 8 and 12. So it's one half of 8, which is 4, times 12, sine of 65 degrees. So if we type that in our calculator. So 43.50, rounding to the nearest tenth, the area is going to be approximately 43.5 units squared.